Oh, I'm ready for this one. <laughs> There's something about the advanced Lindy Hopper that continues to fascinate me. Over the years, I've seen many dancers get to this level and either become an inimitable influence on the genre or somehow become just a copy of their favorite heroes. It takes very little to be inspired by someone else who we look up to, who empowers us throughout each season to stretch a little bit beyond what we feel comfortable with. But once you become competent and have an understanding of how the dance works, it takes an entirely different level of fearlessness to embrace your own artistic view. Most of the time, the dancers at this level get too scared to leave their parents home, if you will. <laughs> I hope this isn't the case uh, when I watch this competition today. Before we jump in, I just wanna say thank you to the Patreon supporters and the Street Smart Swing members for supporting this channel. If you wanna learn how to destroy your competition, <laughs> or if you just wanna get good really fast, check out the benefits in the description below. For now, let's take a look.
were some really special moments here in this competition that just stood out to me. First, I've got to say this band, the uh, Carolina Reapers Swing, guys, check them out if you can. That was some really great live music, and I can only assume they've got some good music on recording too. Now let me jump into one of my favorite dancers. One of my favorites in this competition was Tamara. She was so good at vacillating between the individualism one would have doing a solo jazz and the harmony one must manage dancing with a partner. Her ability to do this was masterful and I hope more followers just pay attention to how she expresses herself while dancing succinctly with her partner. That was just beautiful. Now, I've got to talk about my favorite couple now. I would have to say my favorite couple was Pedro and Roser. At this level, everyone could dance technically, so I wasn't judging too harshly on that aspect. What I was looking for, though, is who could look more like themselves than their influences. And these two, for me, just nailed this type of expansion I was looking for. Their sets were playful and personally responsive. I didn't feel like either of them were trying to get the audience's attention with gimmicky moves. I felt like they were having fun with each other regardless if they were being watched. I also feel they didn't just dance for themselves, but they moved in a way to emphasize the moments that were more prominent in the music that the audience could clearly identify. That generally is doing something different on the fourth A count. Now, of course, I'm using dancer terminology here. If you competitors are not using this strategy in your competitions, you are really missing out on capturing the magic. I talk about taking advantage of this phenomenon a lot in my school. If you are able to tap into that time-sensitive moment during a, a competition, it really won't matter what dance moves you do because it's all about the music and the dancing coming to a climax during the, the fourth eight count. This moment of harmony creates that emotional response from the observer. It's like the Fibonacci sequence, but for competitions, it's truly magical when you think about it. So what did you all think about this? Who was your favorite? Let me know in the comments section below. If I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to help some of you in my class online. Take care.